and Australia has changed too. The Treasurer in his announcements of 6 October has made clear there are a number of new opportunities for those who are in Australia to stay in Australia. I would like to invite you to our webinar about investment and entrepreneur visas in Australia. This is a terrific opportunity to learn about the new and exciting opportunities entrepreneurs and business owners have to stay in Australia or to come to Australia. If you're living here in Australia and you want to stay here, if you're an entrepreneur, if you like innovation, if you're an entrepreneur, if you like innovation, definitely come and join us, like and join us and on the 19th at 8 p.m. and we'll show you how you can apply for a visa. Please stay be with here us permanently. and make Australia your home. You are very welcome. The world has changed and Australia has changed too. The Treasurer in his announcements of 6 October has made clear there are a number of new opportunities for those who are in Australia to stay in Australia. I would like to invite you to our webinar about investment and entrepreneur visas in Australia. This is a terrific opportunity to learn about the new and exciting opportunities entrepreneurs and business owners have to stay in Australia or to come to Australia. If you're living here in Australia and you want to stay here, if you're an entrepreneur, if you like innovation, definitely come and join us on the 19th at 8 p.m. and we'll show you how you can apply for a visa and stay here permanently. Please be with us and make Australia your home. You are very welcome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our investment immigration webinar, New Opportunities to Invest and Stay in Australia. The government's budget of this year signal how to stay. This year, there are double the allocation for investment visas. So there are plenty of opportunities for people who are already in Australia and want to invest and stay. Investment is essential to our economy recovery and will provide opportunities for people already inside in Australia. Today, we will tell you how to live the life you want in Australia, where business means growth, innovation, and security, especially in times of crisis. We welcome our speakers for tonight. In Melbourne, Juan Guillermo Rincón, co-founder of RC Australia and registered immigration agent. In Sydney, Paul Revtree, CEO of Projects RH, and Graham Kinder, CEO of Riva Gold Capital. Good evening, everyone. We start our we evening, webinar yes. with Juan Guillermo, who will update us about the investment visas process. Nicolás, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. I have the pleasure and the, uh, the pleasure and the honor of the star this um, presentation. Uh, my, uh, oh, my job is um, to do the visa part. Uh, we're a migration agency. We have um, several years of dealing with the department and with all the authorities involved in this journey of getting investors and entrepreneurs to Australia to come here and succeed and make a nice life in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Uh, we are the largest, the largest immigration agency in Latin America. Um, <clears throat> our philosophy is to get results. Uh, we used to say that we serve. This is our policy, our policy, our 
mantra is to serve. And when you are a migration agency, serve is getting the visas. And this is what we do. We have more than 100,000 visas approved. And we proudly say that our success rate is 95%. 98% success rate uh, when you come to us, and this is, will be the first step in order to get an investment visa or an entrepreneur visa, is uh, to get a consultation with us. And in this consultation, we'll be very clear, very blunt with you, telling, yes, there is opportunities, or not, there is not a chance, and explain why and how to get the visa approved. Well, the next step is to talk about the, the different visas that they are available for the, for the, in this area. And there is more than 13, 14 different types of visas. So what I did is to make four categories. The first one I call business creation. The second one is for companies who already exist overseas. The third is for a small business owner already in Australia. And, and the last and, for, and the fourth and last are what we call pure investment. Uh, so let me talk about the first one. Business creation. Business creation also can be split into two broader groups. The first one I, is the business owner. The business owner, mm, I think, could be fairly described as a visa with past or with present, better say, with present and future. Uh, meaning the business owner visa, the 188A, is a visa for already business owner, meaning people who already has a business overseas or in Australia. The idea is um, the business, uh, the business people uh, must to have a net asset of $800,000 and the business must to have a gross income, um, gross turnover of $500,000 per annum. The idea is to develop a business in Australia. This, this visa, this business owner visa, requires a state nomination, meaning we have to choose one state, Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales, Northern Territory, and apply for a state endorsement. As well, and you will see in every single visa of those that you will need to have a solid proposal. And this is where my colleagues Paul and Graham make his part of the of the of the job because it's absolutely a clear that the more solid the proposal we make to the government, the business proposal, better chances we have to get the visa. So in this visa, to make a quite a quick summary, is a visa for people who has a business and like to do business in Australia. The second category is a visa we call Venture Capital Entrepreneur. In this visa, in the contrary of the other, you don't need to have present. You need to have future, meaning you have to have an idea, a proposal, an innovative thing to do. This, is, this visa is for entrepreneurs, for startups, for people who like to come to Australia or starting or being in Australia, start a new company. In this visa, I, there are two words I like to highlight. One, innovation. And later on, I, uh, we will talk about what means innovation, what means uh, what Australia is looking for. And the second part I like to stress in this visa is that we need to, uh, to secure an investment for a venture capital fund of no less than $200,000. In this visa, the Venture Capital Entrepreneur Visa, or 188E, 
the entrepreneur wants to have the idea and the idea wants to be so attractive, so convincing, so compelling that you get a venture capital fund interested in investing the visa. How to make that? I will let Paul later on to give you ideas about how to put together these ideas. In the first visa, you must score, in the first visa, the business owner, you must score some points in the in this in this table uh, there is not too difficult for people who are business owner this point test is, is very easy to achieve um this these visas we are talking about are temporary visas meaning the person who come to australia in an investment visa has a period of four years to settle in australia develop the business plan succeed in the business plan, meaning getting some key success factors and met and obtain the permanent residency and then the citizenship for him, uh, for her and for the entire family. So um, these visas, the, the 188s, they are visas that give you a time a period so you can develop your idea and progress to the permanent residency. Then there is another set of visas, uh, which is called um, business creation, which are um, in the same in the same structure. One is business owner, but for business uh, uh, business owner who has already a more developed business, it must to have this asset of one point mil. Australian dollars and the current business, the present uh, we we talk before, most to have an annual gross income of three mil per annum. Again, you need to have a proposal to uh, to develop a business in Australia. Could be the same business you have overseas. Could be another another business you establish or you buy in Australia. In the uh, venture capital entrepreneur, there is also a mirror of the other one we talked before. The 132 venture capital is, again, for innovative ideas, but the amount for getting the permanent residency straight away is to attract venture capital fund for no less than 1 million Australian dollars. Now let's move to the other group of um, entre, um, business visas, which are visas for people who already have business overseas and they like to come to Australia as a um, business sponsor. So the business overseas operates as an sponsor to send a representative to Australia. The representative could be the same owner, could be one of the directors, one of the top executives, and they come here to Australia to develop the market, to make the initial research, to make the first contracts, and then settle in Australia, and from then to progress to another visa. And this is very common when we talk about investors, when we talk about entrepreneurs, usually we have to mix and match several visas in order to get the visa because the process of getting the visa to Australia could be a process of several steps. And this one, the 188 one, the 482 visa, could be a very easy step to start this process. Next, the next category is investment. We call about pure investment in the sense that there is no need for um, for a start a business. It's just take the money, put the money in some uh, investment in Australia, and after four years you can progress to the permanent residency. There is basically two levels of investment: investor. 1.5 significant investor 5 mil premium investors 15 mil 
And lastly, we talk about the small business owners. This visa is not technically a business visa. This visa, this visa is part of another set of visas called general skill migration. The program of general skill migration attracts people who are skilled, who has some particular set of competencies Australia is looking for for his for its um, economic development. So you have to pass all the hurdles to skill migration, meaning you must to have competent English, you have to have one occupation in the demand list. This occupation must to be assessed by the relevant uh, skills authority, such as Engineers Australia or VETASES or Australian Computer Society or the relevant one. A third, must to score a minimum points in the uh, general skill migration program. And then you apply for an estate. Several states, uh, and in this moment, Tasmania, Queensland, and Australia, they are attracting skilled migrants who like to start a business. In this case, the amount to invest is so much lower. In the case of Tasmania, in fact, there is not a minimum investment amount. You, you need the idea, most to be a new idea, a uh, startup business, but you have to have a very solid business plan. You must operate the, the, the business for six months and forecast your annual income as a sole owner in this visa for no less than $54,000 a year. And you get the endorsement from the government to stay in Australia. Queensland has something similar in Queensland there is necessary to buy an existing an existing business is not for startups is for existing business and the minimum investment is one hundred thousand dollars South Australia is opening the, the system there is very few details at the moment but definitely will be very very interesting uh, to see what is looking South Australia which is by history one of the more welcoming states for migrants all around the country and this is all for me i pass the the word to paul paul is the person who make the magic of getting your ideas to convince investors to convince the fund the the venture capital funds and more important help me to convince the government that you have an idea to stay in Australia. Paul, all yours. Thank you very much, Juan, and thank you also, Nicholas. Ladies and gentlemen, migration is a key part of Australia's economic policy, and it has been that way for over 200 years. What I'd like to do tonight is welcome you to the next step of making Australia your permanent home. At Projects RH, we rely on the advice and recommendation from RC Australia as to the appropriate visa for you. Tonight, I would like to focus on investment visas. Um, it's a large enough topic, and it's one that many people wish to seek additional information on. What we do need to do is go back to the Australian budget and understand what the Australian government has been trying to do. We didn't have a budget in May, it got deferred to October, and there's substantial messaging in the budget. It needs to be seen in the context of not only COVID, but that in February it was clear we were moving into what's called a technical recession. As such, the Australian government has said, we need to create jobs, we need to stimulate the economy. And we've had what's called in the economics profession, a classical Keynesian pump. The government's spending lots of money and making business happen. 
but it's doing things like job keeper and, and job maker. But what it said is that the visas that are being issued are very much part of the Australian economic success story of the next decade. So what they want to do is get people creating businesses as businesses will create those jobs. So let's go back a step. What did the Treasurer say really he wanted to do in the budget? He wants to create 950,000 jobs over the next three years, but very much based on what I call Germany Mark II. Australia will move from being an agricultural and tourism country to being a exporter of smarts, technical products, high value add. So his job is he wants to get people to invest in the Australian economy to create these jobs. So how did he do it? What he said was, I'm going to continue with company and personal tax cuts so I can stimulate demand in the domestic economy and encourage people to invest and get that return. I'm going to create jobs that are part of this. So what I've said is I'll support up to 50% of apprenticeship salaries with a focus on engineering type skills. Also, he created subsidies for new jobs for people who are under 35 and even more if they're under 30. And he subsidised the internet. So he's stimulating more money in the electronic economy. In that, he's also said, I'll give you 18.5% on money spent on pure research and development and with a focus on advanced manufacturing. But also he wants to see the projects of the universities and the CSIRO commercialised. So for one of our clients at Projects RH is in the confectionery business, they are, try are seeing they're getting money for developing new projects, research, for installing equipment and for employing more people. So those opportunities are available to all businesses. So what was in it from immigration? Oh, thank you. There's only 160,000 places in 2021. As Juan said, the number of business migration and investment visa applicants are now at doubled what they were last year at 13,500. What's important is there's a limited pool of people. So those who are in Australia have a wonderful opportunity, particularly if they have gained some education here. And most people here speak an acceptable level of English. At the moment, there's a lot of pressure to get the people that are here to stay, contribute to the economy and make it grow. And one of the clear ways they can do that is work with RCA, Projects RH and River Gold and go down the path of an investment visa. What are the winners? So there were particular areas also that the government said we want to see the commercialisation of and jobs created in. So it was agri-tech, fintech, medical tech, cyber security, engineering, mining and technologies, space and advanced manufacturing and big maths. It doesn't mean you need to be an engineer or mathematician. What it means is your business needs to work in that area. For example, you can be a finance person working and driving a business. You can be a marketing person working in those areas and driving a business and you will get clear government support. What they do in short is open the doors and tell us what the government wants you to go forward with. So what does it mean for you? At the moment there are 2.3 million people in Australia who are on visas of some kind or other. There's only 160,000 places to move to the next stage in 2021. 
So, and of those, 72,000 of those have been allocated to partner visas and 15,000 to talented and gifted. So for me, there's 13,500 places for investment and business visa immigrants. Subject to meeting all the requirements, these places should be filled on a first in, first served basis for those that meet the requirements. But reality is governments setting those requirements as they go. And to get an investment visa, you need state nomination. And in getting state nomination, you need to demonstrate you're meeting the requirements of the state. And not surprisingly, those areas of state nomination reflect those of the Commonwealth Government. They tend to be a little more specific. So in the case of Victoria, for example, whilst they want MedTech, they want it focused around the Parkville area near the University of Melbourne. And that's a clear centre where MedTech nationally happens. So none of that's surprising. So what are the steps? You need to get your plan from RCA Australia. And RCA needs to tell us that you're an investment visa applicant and you're eligible and can work towards a 188E or a 132B or whatever. We then work with you and commit ourselves to the journey. We, you can bring to us a business or we can show you a number of businesses which we have already. What's important is you need support from an early stage venture capital fund if you go for an investment visa. And you need that before you get state nomination and you need state nomination or state or territory nomination to get approval from Homeland Affairs. So what we need to do is ensure that we deliver what you need to meet the criteria. So you need a project. And, and that's, as Juan pointed out earlier, at the end of the journey, you need to own at least 30% of the project and the company becomes your nominator for the visa. So you need to have a commitment from the early stage venture capital fund if you're going for a 132B visa, that they will fund at least a million dollars. And if you're going for a 188E visa, that they will fund at least $200,000. But we need to be very clear, this is the minimum they will fund, and I expect you'll need to raise money from other areas. And this is where you would work with Graham in both dealing with the venture capital funds and other opportunistic investors. So what we've been doing is working with venture capital funds to find out where the projects are they like. And not surprisingly, the projects they like are in the same areas the government wants us to invest because they run their numbers and they get these are attractive investment areas. So these have been in so financial services. Online and offshore, online banking, online education has been a surprise to me, but they see education in all forms as critical. They're looking for investment portfolio management, and there are a number of good opportunities in that space. And they're very keen to see investment in the commercialization of blockchain technology. Not surprisingly, and most applicable to many of you, is working with offshore students and how we can help them both here and offshore to attain their educational requirements. Whilst we talk of mining of big data and sharing, what we're talking about is IT. It is not conventional mining. But mining, for example, does use a lot of these services, blockchain, investments, and development of trade services. Under the, the law, the banks and other financial institutions <clears throat> need to know their clients and have asset management. 
So there are financial programs or fintech developments which achieve that. International trade services, which is exchange of carnets and things like that. And food technologies, which my friend Arthur is very keen to develop. But we also have a number of very specific projects which have become available to us from a venture capital funds. Right, let's see. Oh, sorry. So we have a thing, a project called Hash 1668, which is about credit analytics. So for people, it's an opportunity to work in that business. Water Ledger is a blockchain based system using water, managing water rights and asset allocation. We have systems that do international settlements and investments, blockchain in security. Of, of photos, credit rating and trading systems, managing the temperature of food exports. One of the great fears in the international food industry is that foods get hot and they're spoilt in process and you need to be able to demonstrate that in the life cycle of the food, it didn't get hot. Whilst cryptocurrency is often thought of as something that's exotic, it's becoming increasingly um, um, modified to become security tokens. And these are now being provided in a regulated environment and issued by governments. So there's a lot of pressure or support for that to be developed. And finally, the one we have an opportunity is a student loan program called Boost. We have many more opportunities, ladies and gentlemen. You need to come and explain after you've met with Juan what your interest and expertise is, and we can help you find a suitable project. It's now pleasure, with pleasure I hand over to Graham. Most people love hearing from Graham because he's the money man. Take it away, Graham. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening. Again, it's great to be working with Juan, with Paul uh, this evening. Guys, uh, we're just very keen to see if we can help you to better understand the issues around business visas that enable you to stay in Australia. So what we have is that we understand many of you are already living here, working, studying in Australia, but we find a number of people are looking at visas that may expire soon or may be difficult or impossible to renew because they've completed their studies and there's no further opportunities there. We've also identified that the impact of COVID-19 really has changed the way that the Australian government and the federal governments have used the, viewed the visa program. And Paul has outlined a little bit earlier, things like you know a, a virtually a 100% increase in the number of business visas that are offered by Australia is really quite exciting because it creates great opportunities for those of you who want to move and are prepared to move fairly quickly. This is not something that uh, you can afford to wait around on. And importantly, we're talking about for these businesses, businesses that are new or innovative, creative, which is something that Australia has been proud of in its history. It has almost since uh, its inception has had innovation, The uh, in, our indigenous population, our First Nation uh, developed things like the, the Woomera or the Didgeridoo through to more recently, we're talking to you tonight on Wi-Fi, which is an Australian invention, as are many medical science technologies and advancement, uh, many uh, engineering advancements are all born of Australia because our nation, our people, our governments support entrepreneurship at every possible level. So we want to try and work with you to see if we can help support you. So we then turn around and say, whatever business that we're looking at, it needs some capital. It needs some money to get started. As we've noted here, all meaningful business visas need some investment money to, 
to get behind the business plan and turn it into a reality, not just a dream. So you need to get some startup capital. Now, this will often involve you. And for many venture capital investors, they want to see that you have put your heart and soul into the project. So it does mean you need to commit some of your savings. It may mean that you look, need to look to borrow some funds. It may mean that you turn to your family, friends for financial support. Because once you've demonstrated that commitment to the business, the fact that you've got some, as we say, some skin in the game, some real personal commitment, that opens the door for other people to get in and back you. If you're prepared to back yourself, others are happy to look at backing you. If you're not prepared to back yourself, it makes it very hard for somebody else to say they'll put their capital behind your idea when you're not even prepared to support it. So following your personal commitment and the capital support of friends and family, there's lots of ways that people can get money. Certainly debt capital is available. We talk about friends and family. There may be some debt capital available to you through more traditional borrowing sources like from banks. We discourage it, but we do note that right at the moment, interest rates are at an historically relatively low uh, period. So what once was a great concern about the burden of carrying debt, uh, quite frankly, debt is not a bad funding method to start with in the current economic environment. It might get you a bit of startup capital. But beyond that, there are lots of other ways of securing money. So there's the equity capital. And so many early stage companies are going to get their initial money, the capital, the equity from private investors. Now, they may be people that you know. They may be people that we can introduce you to. So people will invest as a small group of investors uh, or as individuals. Often these are referred to as angel investors. The cautionary note that we offer to you here is that sometimes angel investors are looking for a very large controlling interest in your business. If they're putting their money up, they want a big control. So we work with you to try and make sure that if you're dealing with and working with angel investors, that that's done on a sensible basis that will allow your business to grow under your stewardship, provided you're working with appropriate specialist advisors. We can really help you there. Investment bankers, brokers, merchant banks, all of that sort of thing can also assist the company. But usually they're only there with any significant capital after a business has started to get going and they can see the future. Often if a company, you build it up and it's ready to move towards a listing on one of the Australian stock exchanges, even the second boards, uh, the National Stock Exchange, you can find these companies will step in at that stage. It's not usually there at the beginning. What we are looking for at the beginning is venture capital. These are a group of investors who understand that they're going to place their money into an investment typically that could be more risky than reinvesting in big blue chip stocks on the Australian Stock Exchange. They know that this is a journey that they need to walk with you and they need to be a bit more patient, but they're looking for strong growth. They're looking for you to really get in and build the business. That's how they can enjoy a great return on their investment. They'll invest with you at the beginning and enjoy that early stage of very rapid dynamic growth in the business. So depending on how we get the funds for those set up, and there are quite a number of them around, they can be a standard venture capital fund or indeed for some of the visas, there's a really exciting group of venture capital funds called the Venture Capital Limited Partnerships. Now, even better than that, there's some that are specifically targeted for real startup businesses. These we call the early stage venture capital limited partnership funds. These funds are very good for the investors in them because the capital gain that comes out of the growth in your business is not subject to capital gains tax. So they have some really great tax efficiencies for the investors which is why the investors are happy to put their money in the fund 
and then rely on us to work with the fund in order to make sure that you've got the capital to help get your business up and grow. We even find that many people, the family, the friends, the other people around you, may prefer to invest not directly in your business, but through one of the venture capital funds so that they too can enjoy the capital gains tax free benefits that these funds offer. And our job is to work with you, with Projects RH, with RC Australia as an integrated package to try and come up with the model that suits you and your business goals and dreams ideally. So if the business is structured correctly and we've got that early stage venture capital limited partnership funding in place, perhaps with some investment by you, your friends, your family, some of which you may have borrowed a little bit to put in. If the business is right, and it's in some of those categories that Paul has mentioned to you earlier, and indeed a couple of other areas that may be really just because of the sheer innovation or the growth opportunities in a state, there may also be government grants, further taxation benefits, there's wages, subsidies, there's many other things that can be brought into your new business to help you make it a real success. So Australia is very keen to build on this history we've had. You know, there's 40,000 years of history of innovation. Uh, the last couple of hundred years in particular, we've started to see technology innovations come to the fore, lead the world. And we want you to try and build a business that you can be proud of in that entrepreneurial, supportive environment that is the Australian market. But it really does start with you. If you're here, if you're in Australia now, uh, even if you are offshore and listening to this, there are pathways we can help you find. If you start working with RC Australia, they can help find the visa package that's going to work for you. You can then make the decision, are you ready to take the, the risk? Are you ready to say, I'm not an employee anymore, I'm not a student anymore, I want to live and stay in Australia, I'm going to set up a business, I'm going to put some money into it, and once I've shown that, I'm prepared to put the money in, we can help you find others to put the money in. If you're driven to succeed, you want to improve your lifestyle, and who can't improve their lifestyle here in Australia? I'm a bit biased, but isn't this the greatest nation on earth? You can go snow skiing in the winter, you can go surfing in the summer, you can live the dream here in Australia. We've got the tropical rainforest, we've got the deserts, we've got the beaches, we've got the big cities and we've got the little rural towns. There's a place in this country for you. Our national anthem says that we have got plains and lands to share. Guys, this is, you know, it's built into our national anthem. We want you to come and stay. Are you goal focused? Can you identify this is the pathway that you're on and you can set goals, set objectives and move towards them long term, short term? If you can do that and you can bring to a business that confidence, enthusiasm, the passion to get a business up and rolling, that's what will help inspire the investors we will introduce you to. If you walk in there and you've got the conviction that you can make this work, that will give them confidence. If you've got confidence in you, they can have confidence in you. But they do look for a couple of other things. They want to see that you are certainly self-motivated you're the one who needs to make this happen. We can give you the tools, the introductions, the technical people around you to help make sure that you can comply with all of the regulations, that you do it all properly, effectively, efficiently, but it's down to you to get out of bed and make it happen. But in doing that, we also need to make sure that you understand working hard and working long, long hours is great, but you can only do that with the support of your family. So you need to maintain some balance between working and family commitments and your lifestyle. But singularly, the most important key to success, I find, is that you need to be ready to seek advice from experts. None of us on your panel tonight 
are happy to do all of this process of supporting you alone. I can help you find money. I can help you find investors. But I can't help you build all of the business plans precisely to meet the government requirements. Paul Raftery and Art Projects RH can help you do that. Neither Paul or I are going to pretend to have anywhere near the expertise of RC Australia and one that his team can bring to you. You need the expert advice, not just from us, but we can help introduce you to the relevant lawyers, accountants, engineers, the technical experts in whatever field of endeavour you want to work with. We have a network of people that we can bring to try and help you succeed, even down to writing the business plan that meets the state government requirements. The people at Projects RH can help facilitate that with a professional business plan writing uh, group who can help you get all of that work done. So we can make sure your application is designed for success if you work with the experts that are around you. My observation is without the strength of a professional team, applying for a business visa is pointless. You need to be a businessman and a good businessman will always have a group of technical experts around them. Preparing the business visa application requires serious attention, serious professionalism. We can help you find the right projects, the right business. We can work with Paul Raftery. Even if you don't have a project in your discussions with RC Australia, they can come to us and say they've got a great candidate, motivated, happy to put a bit of their own money up, but can we help you find the right business for you? The answer is yes, we can work as a team to make that happen. And then with the documentation and support from Projects RH, the immigration advice from RC Australia and the whole professional team that's right for you and for your business, you're going to eliminate all of the risks around applying for a business visa. We know the process well, and we're there to try and support you through that process. As we move forward, we're very keen at this stage to address any questions and answers that you may have in this last 15 minutes or so that we've got together. So perhaps Nicholas, I might hand back to you at this juncture. Well, thanks a lot. And thank you, Juan, Paul and Graham. Has been incredible. If I understood, then if as an investment, do I need to start the process with RH? They will guide, guide me until migration policies. Then I will go with uh, Paul with and projects RH, then it will create this business and he will introduce me to Graham, who will fund that money, as Paul said just before. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Everyone here has many questions. Actually, I, I've been receiving through the webinar a few questions. Uh, I'm now going to start with one. There is a question about money. And it's asking about how much will be the minimum catch do I need to apply for an investment visa? I will leave this this question to Ram. I think he's the, the best to, to answer that. Thank you. Well, as one, one will be well aware, there are some visas there that don't specify any minimum investment visa. For example, in Tasmania, there is no specified minimum. But to be honest, folks, if you're going to set up a business in Australia, and it's going to be successful, you need to take into account all of the operational expenses that are going to relate to a company. You need to be able to have enough income or drawings from the business for you to be able to pay your own mortgage or to pay your own rent, to be able to buy food, to put petrol in the car. This is what the business needs to be able to support you. And the business needs time to get established and it would depend on the different types of business. I would say as a rule of thumb, an absolute minimum to target is $200,000. Absolute minimum. But you do not have to have $200,000. If we've got the right project, we can help match you with the investors to put that sort of investment together. 
So technically the answer is there is no minimum if you're happy to work in Tasmania from a practical point of view. You need enough money to be able to live on while you build build the business. Thank you. Um, for all of you, and you will decide how to answer this question, what happens if there is a group of friends, four or five friends, that are here and they want to invest? That can all come together, their families, and create a business? That's over to you, Juan. That's your baby. Yes, let's just take it over. Well, <clears throat> could, could I, would you like me to answer it? Um, I, I come from a slightly different view of it. At the end, if you're going for a 132B or a 188E to sponsor you, the nominating company you need to, at the point of nomination, control 30% of the company. So if you have five people that want to come together to have a business, that wouldn't work because that's 150% of the company. What happens in most businesses, as you raise money, the person's diluted. Uh, they, get, they have more value but less shares. I would think it'd be very hard for any business going through the 132B or 188E process to end up with more than two people it's able to support. Truthfully, I think one is the perfect number. If we are considering the investment business as such, definitely, Paul, this is the answer. Nevertheless, when we have four, five, uh, multiple uh, people, five, six, we can also structure some sort of company. And the company will be a third party. And the company could sponsor the owners through another visa such as the 186 we didn't discuss here not part of that mm. so mm, yes we can we can find a way and maybe this is this is an excellent question so we can explain why we have to start with a consultation regarding the particular the particulars of the of each case because in many cases what we see is that we come, uh, as we said, five people. I will say, okay, this is not for an investment visa, but we can set two visas, one, M one firm to sponsor three of them, and another one who sponsor two of them, and they work together because we can make we can make joint ventures because we can make associations. I mean, Australian law is so rich. And the opportunities are so many that we must to find the best way, but definitely it's opportunities. Absolutely. Making the most of your answer, Juan, there is a few questions talking about the difficult between uh, the categories you mentioned as a small business owner and the visa 491, specific in Tasmania. And then there is a few people saying, oh, this uh, 491 is difficult, but it's, indeed it's more difficult to a small business owner. In which basis you can say that they are difficult or not? Okay, um, Nicolas, difficult is, is so, so relative. Uh, I would say this is a competitive process, one element. The second element we have to, to consider, this is there is a very prescriptive process. I mean, the law has very clear regulations. So for the migration officer, there is a little discretion. If we are careful meeting all the requirements, would you get the visa? 
So the key element is the be detailed, be thorough, be complete. The business plan must be solid, must be attractive, must be must be a good one. We must be a good competitor. There is a saying: don't don't fear the the competitors, fear your own incompetency. And I think in this place is very clear. The, the small business owner category by Tasmania is a competition. You, you must be a good competitor. If you are a good competitor, you got the visa. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question for Paul. And you, before you mentioned a few projects and are you working with, can any investment investor call you and work with those projects you are working with? We have the opportunity for an investor to contact us and work with those projects, yes. Okay, that's fantastic. So we can contact you and if our fields are the same, we can go through and invest in the projects you are working. Certainly. That's fantastic. Uh, Paul, there is another question for you that Australia might have invest a lot of money in this economy. As an entrepreneur, how do I get some of it? Ah. Well, firstly, you too have to invest. And some of it comes back as cash rebates out of the tax system. So you need to be registered in the tax system and work with your accountant and lodge your returns on a quarterly basis. But the 18.5 cents that I mentioned comes back as, a, as an annual return based on your lodgement of a tax return. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, there is quite a few other questions about um, rules. And uh, there is three or four questions asking about families. These people are in Australia. And she say, can I start this investment visa and include my husband and my daughters? I think it's a question for me. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> these visas are based in which call the family unit. Family unit is um, partners and children under 23 years. This is this is the family unit. Provided the children are single. Okay. And well, going and now asking a few questions about Graham. Everyone is really keen to start this process of their visas and also create this business. But few of our assistant attenders are asking where can i find that money and can i borrow money to start my project uh thanks nicholas so certainly by working through rc australia and we find the right visa for you once we've identified that and working with projects rh it's then a matter of once we know which visa is right for you, we've got an idea of what sort of business you want to work on or work with us to, to come up with a visa, uh, sorry, to come up with a project. Once we have those elements in place, then we can start to say, now we can start to look for where can we get the money. There are venture capital funds that we work with whom are only interested in certain classes of business. Some are only interested in the agribusiness, so in the farming sector. Others are, their, their fund is exclusively available for medical science. Other people are interested in a wide range of other uh, sectors. And, and so there's uh, people who are interested in investing into uh, early childhood development. And so, you know, there's a whole range of different if, uh, venture capital funds and some venture capital funds even have their own projects certainly some that Paul has been working with recently where they would love to introduce the candidate to the investment projects that they have and see if they can so we can match people to projects projects to people and uh, and there's a lot of ways of raising the money from different types of venture capital funds and early stage venture capital limited partnerships all right. And um, yes, it is possible to borrow the money. Absolutely. If somebody has some form of uh, of, of of equity in a, 
a property or have some some uh, existing banking relationship. We know people who even start by this, their conviction in their business is so strong that they will even use some of their available credit uh, facilities to make a sensible and measured uh, advance on their credit facilities that they've already got. Okay, thank you, Graham. How about if I already have the money and if I invest in a setting up the new business, how safe is my money? Uh, the answer is the money is as safe as you are in your new business. But what I will say, and, and I don't watch that to be to be a trite answer, all business has some measure of risk. And this is just the nature of business. I'm not aware of anything that is totally risk free. So there is some measure of risk. Our role to work with one, and in particular with Paul, is to make sure that we structure a business on good, sound, long-standing business principles that have decades of proven success factors in them. So our job is to minimise risk at every possible level. And we're charged with doing that if we're bringing in external investors. They understand that there's risk, but what they usually understand that that's related to the term, the duration of their investment. So we need to work with you to get a business that can be up and has enough money to fund it through its growth period until it's recurrently successful. So yes, there's some risk. We'll manage it together. Okay. There is an interesting question here that probably many of us are wondering about. Regarding your experience, which is the better easier or maybe faster way to be up and running from the following options buying an already established business or starting up from scratch okay um and i would have to answer that by saying if the existing business is there and it has a good, strong, proven track record and is not reliant on the existing business owner. Too many people buy an existing business where 80% of the business is because of the relationships that the existing owner has established. And if they, if they leave, then those relationships can evaporate very, very quickly. So there's no straightforward answer, existing business or start up a new one. Um, new startups that are not well planned have uh, an alarming failure rate. Startups, however, that are planned with professional advisors around them tend to be remarkably successful. So we have the opportunity to introduce clients of RC Australia to both a range of existing businesses and a range of startups and find out where our clients comfort level is that's the real key to success if you are it's if it's you and your money's going into it as well where are you comfortable that's what our job is is to match you so that you're comfortable if you're happy you believe it's going to succeed it likely will Look, with that, Nicholas, I'm very mindful we've come up against our nine o'clock time slot. Yes. I'm also mindful that there's quite a number of questions that we've not yet answered. So if I may, what I would like to do is, is just invite everybody uh, to take the opportunity to shoot off an email. You can contact, uh, start the process by just touching base and, and if you would take your questions from well, from the chat box and restate them in an email to info at projects rh we can then identify we can certainly get you a quick answer back on those questions but this is the same email address where you can start the process you can shoot an inquiry through to us and we can forward that through to one recon at rc australia one can then communicate with you and go through the initial steps of trying to identify who are you, what are you, what are you looking to achieve, and he can try to help find the visas that best suit you. And from there, we can just move carefully, slowly, diligently through the process with Paul at Projects RH through to, if, if all is lining up well, come to us at 
River Gold Capital and we'll help you polish up the capital, the money side of things, put it all together and it'll work brilliantly. But the process starts with you tonight getting uh, your questions and your inquiries through to info at Projects RH. And from there, we'll connect you to the network of professionals that can make your visa application to invest and stay in Australia a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, from me at least, I'm going to say a very good night and thank you for listening. Thank you all. Thank you, Nicholas. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Thanks for attending. Yeah.